Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. Well my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today is the cable bag and this is a design by me and this is using a great concept of cabling and if you look at it really carefully you can see the cabling going in and out. So you have like the cabling locks here and then you have the arrow stitches that are on beside are beside. This is done as a complete round and what happens is that we go all the way around and then we reverse and go back the other way and then we reverse and go back the other way and reverse. The reason why we do that is that if you go in a continuous round and like you see in hats the uh, angle of the slip stitching always goes up. So if you go back and forth you can get your straight lines to go in the forward motion. So as we get started today we're going to start out the base here and it will be like a tube and then we're going to then finish off the base then later we'll do the the top band and then we'll do your handles as well and this is a good to go. So let's talk a little bit more about this pattern because Daniel thought it was a little bit too big and let's talk about that. So what we have here is this bag and as I was doing it on the airplane as I got a really good chunk Daniel said the bag is way too big and I'm like no people like to shove a lot of stuff in their bag and he goes no it's way too big. So what you see here is six repeats of the cabling. So you see one, two, three and then you flip it over four, five and six. So he suggested that we remove at least one cable out to bring it smaller. So this is 16 inches wide. Yeah it's a, kind of a big bag. So if you re uh, remove it one cabling here and do only repeating a five then what happens is that you can make it 13 inches. So you're seeing the repeat pattern. So it's one through 17 and then one through seven or then uh, four through 17 and then four through 14 and we'll get into that later on. So you're gonna see that this bag is going to go really quickly in the sense that once you understand this pattern it really makes a lot of sense. You're going to be using your Karen Cotton Cakes with a four millimeter size G crochet hook but I've done you one solid. I got you a diagram and so let's review that next. The pattern we're presenting to you has three pages. So it's a lot of detail when it comes to explaining how to do cable work. So there's a lot of words. So if you know how to read a, a crochet diagram I had Daniel whip up one of those and we're gonna be following that here today. So the instructions should match. If you see anything that's off just let me know and uh, we can make an adjustment to this pattern. So what we have here is that we, on page number three is a crochet diagram and I had Daniel highlight us the path of which the cable work is gonna follow. So let me talk a little bit about that and then we're gonna dive even harder into this. In crochet diagrams we have the stitch key so these are matching what is required in the pattern. I also put one of these here so when it's highlighted in this color it's three single crochets after in a row after or before the cable and when it's green it's two crochets and I wanted to do that so that you can see that there's consistency in this pattern. So when you have the cable work when it's coming out so this is I'm gonna call it a cable lock. It's just going in and out. So you're gonna see that it's gonna trail up and then it's gonna cross over and then and change positions. But when it crosses over you can see that there's two uh, round, uh, rows in here where it, it has to increase in. So it increases and pulls in. And so when you do that then, then it creates a two single crochets in the middle here to compensate for that. So what you can watch for and I'm gonna call this the arrow stitch that's here and this is always in the same position. If you get this a lot of this can follow into suit. So when we go to start we're going to notice that there is a right side and the wrong side. And when you do the right side and the wrong side what happens in this particular pattern is that if you do cable work and you go straight up like this you cannot get that if you go in a continuous round. So at the end of and then keep on going it'll always go up on a slant like this. So what you wanna do is that you want to at the end turn your project in certain ones. So one and two are going, going in the same direction and then the wrong side is that we're gonna turn our project and go in the other direction. So when you do that it keeps the stitches lined up on top of each other. Here's the thing. We made it nice and simple for you. All of these odd sizes here are always going to be once you get into number three are always going in the wrong direction and they're always single crochets. So whether they're single crochets in each of the stitches or in a single crochet into a chain one. Always single crochet. So it's this side here is the right side. So when you're physically crocheting this, this cable work will appear right before your very eyes. So there's nothing that happens behind the project that you can't see. So this makes it really easy for me to write it but also for me to have it in diagram format just like this. So what we're going to do is that when we go to start we're going to go in this direction here because it says the right side and when it stops here what's gonna happen is that it's, you just pick up and go here. Okay, so it's kind of going there. So when you go in the other direction, the wrong side, you're just gonna go this way 
and follow it that way. So I'm going to get started. So this is using Rose Whisper. This is Karen Cotton Cakes. You're gonna need four balls to do this. Now what I want to explain to you is that I'm gonna use a Karen one pound yarn on camera. It gets really confusing for new crocheters when the colors are changing on its own to know where to go. So I'm just gonna use a solid color Karen one pound yarn today in order to show you this particular concept. So you ready? Let's go. So four millimeter size G crochet hook to your Karen Cotton Cakes. Um, I would not use Karen one pound just as a bag but I am going to show it for demonstration reasons. So let's get going and see what you can do today. So let's begin. If you wanna do the size that you saw on camera that's a 16 inch that's the oversized then you're going to chain 126. If you wanna do it Daniel's size what he recommended you're gonna change 105. But if you'd like to change the size completely it's multiples of 21 and I'm only gonna do two multiples of 21 because that's all I need to do to show you. So just I'm gonna show you a trick. So let's just do 10 together. So 10 chains so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. Once you get your 10 just pull it off and put your hook into the beginning chain and then insert the hook onto the loop again and continue. So 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 and 21 and there is my first multiple. So when you get a satisfied this helps you not twist your chain by doing it this way. So continue all the way to the number chains that you would like to do today. So for transparency I have two multiples at 21 and once you have that done just yarning over pulling it through and through. So you'll do that with yours and because you did th that idea of keeping it on this chain will not be twisted. So let's begin round number one and we're gonna, con this is the right side of the project meaning this is the side that we're gonna look at. We're gonna chain three which counts as a double crochet and you wanna immediately jump to the next chain. Turn it over and get the back hump of the chain only and yarning over and going into that back hump. Once you do the first back hump the, the rest should, the chain should stay turned over for the remaining of it. So just do the first one and then keep on going all the way around. At the end of the round I'm recommending that you do a double count to make sure that you have the number of crochets. If you chained 126 there should be 126 crochets here. If there is chaining 1, 5, 105 then it should be 105. In my case there should be a total count of 42 as I did two multiples of 21. So please double crochet in each of the chains all the way around. Once you come all the way back around verify that your count is right and then I want you to slip stitch to the top of the first chain three that you started with. I want you to make sure that this is not twisted in any weird way as well so when you fold it out it should not be uh, twisted. It should be like a fan belt. You'll notice a little bit of an extra space here. That is just gonna happen this one time. So I wanna take you back to the chart. Let's show you where you are and let's show you so you understand the pattern. So back here in the pattern we've just come all the way around. We've slip stitched here and now we're gonna continue going on the right side and we're going to chain up one and we're going to single crochet in the first three we're going to chain one and then single crochet in the next four. So when you finish it over here you just jump and you see one, two, three, four. And you just continue to go across. So when you go and do the repeat you just ignore the slip stitching as you're going all the way around and you only have to worry about that when you come back all the way around. I want you to pay attention that we are creating these spaces here for the arrow stitch in the future but we're also going to be working and creating these uh, the starting of the cables. So you will notice that there's consistency in these cables. So you notice that I never highlighted this to be green because it's continuing around. So this is like a setup round because the repeat starts in round number four going all the way up. So let's start up and we're going to be creating this and once you understand how to create this the rest of it pretty much follows in line. So let's do that today. So let's begin. We're going to chain up one and notice I did not turn the project. I wanna continue on the right side and I'm going to single crochet in the top of that chain three and single crochet in the next two. So that gives you your total of three that you see in the diagram. Now you're gonna make space for the arrow stitch that will appear in the future. So you're gonna chain up one, skip one and single crochet in the next. And there is your space. So we're now gonna continue then and we're going to single crochet in the next three. So after this arrow stitch space there's actually technically four before and four after. 
for single crochet. The reason why there wasn't four before this time because you just started it and so you'll you'll do a finish this with the single crochet in the end so it gives you your four. Now we're going to begin the cable work section. So we're gonna start up on the outside cabling and we're going to do front post double crochet around the next two. So wrap the hook coming into the side, pull through, pull through two and two and do the next one. So that is the first section there and then you're going to single crochet in the next two. If you lean it back over you'll see that there's two stitches, one, two. That is these two. So don't confuse those as using them. So single crochet in the next two and this time then the next four in a row will each be a front post double crochet. So see how these are front post double crochet? So then these two are the single crochet so the next four here are the front post double crochets. So just keep an eye on those just for this round. You're getting yourself set up so that you can see the cabling a lot easier in the future. So there's four in a row of front post double crochet. Now this is the middle of the cabling a knot itself and so you're going to repeat doing like a mirror effect. So if you had two single crochets here that means that there's gotta be two single crochets on this side and then the next two are front post double crochets. So now we're gonna head back and make our way for another arrow stitch. So the next four in a row will each be a single crochet. So one, two, three and four. And now the next two Sorry, you're not, and now you're gonna create the arrow stitch. So you're gonna chain one, skip one, single crochet into the next four. So one, two, three and four and now we're gonna begin the cable knotting again. So let's uh, do that. So we're just going to make sure that we're getting everything right. So the next two in a row is gonna be a front post double crochet. So one and two. The next two are a single crochet so one and two and now this is the main knot area so the next four are a front post double crochet. And you're gonna continue this manner all the way around and you'll obviously have a much bigger section than me or than I am having it here because I'm just doing a smaller sample with you on camera. So eventually you're gonna hit start hitting and getting close to the end. So let's just review on how to do that when you get to the end. So the next two, I always turn over and count the four. So when I'm covering over top four, I count it. So one, two, three, four, those are the four in front. And now the next two are going to be a single crochet and the final uh, so you got three stitches left. The next two are front post double crochet. So that's the other part of the knot. And the very final stitch that you run into is a single crochet. And just to, to prove it to you, see how this was the middle of the next arrow stitch. We had three in a row. So this makes it the fourth that you needed. And so you're just gonna slip stitch to the first one and that is that round completed. It's hard to see the cabling now but it'll happen. So what we're going to do in round number three is I want you to turn the project and we are going to start then of going single crochet. So you chain up one and it's one single crochet in every stitch all the way around. The one you need to watch for the most is that chain one of the arrow stitch. You need, make sure that you don't accidentally skip over that and uh, that's the only one that you need to watch for. So I haven't hit it yet. I will show it to you in a moment. They all line up to each other so it's easier to see in the future. This is kind of the setup row so you're just getting used to the idea for this. So I'm continuing to single crochet until I hit that chain one space just to prove it to you which I know is coming up because see how these are bulging out? That's part of that main cable work itself and I can see that that chain one is coming. So there it is. So that's the middle of one of your arrow stitches. So you go into the stitch before it. You go right into the space to fill it in and then the other stitch right after it. So please do that all, 
away around for round number three. So in coming up all the way around you'll notice the chain one space. The arrow stitch is right near to the end of these rounds when you come in all the way around. So single crochet one into each and then slip stitch to the top of the first single crochet and then turn your project. And then we're gonna continue now to round number four. We're really gonna start making that like cable jump and let's go back to the diagram and let's take a look. So in round number four this is where the repeat starts. So if you're repeating this video this is where you're gonna come back. So we're gonna start up and go in the right side of the direction. So what's gonna happen is that we are gonna go this way. The arrow's pointing that way. We're gonna chain up one and then we're gonna do a treble into this one here. This is that chain one space so we're gonna go to the actual stitch that we jumped over here and then you're gonna single crochet back up onto the, this row chain one, single crochet back up to there and then treble back into this one here. Then continuing single crochet the next two and then we're gonna come straight down with the front post double crochet into this other front post double crochet chain or then two single crochets and then we're gonna do a crisscross here. So we're gonna start and go over and then we're gonna come back and get those other two and then chain uh, sorry, two single crochets. So do you notice these positioning of these two single crochets? It's very strategic. It's not a guess. That's what it is. And then these are front post double crochets. And you continue around in the same manner. And then just finish it off with the single crochet in the written instructions. This is where it ends. And then you pick up the repeat going all the way around again. So let's start off round number four. Let's see how you're gonna do. Let's start on round number four. Chain one and single crochet in the same one that you are are just coming out of. Okay? So now we're gonna do a front post treble to the actual stitch that you skipped over in round number two. So we're gonna wrap the hook twice and you're gonna go right into the stitch. Okay, so just grab that stitch, stay to the front side of the project and pull through and pull through two, two and two and go all the way back up. Now because that's a treble and it's a front post you're going to, this stitch that's next is technically this treble. So don't include that one and you're gonna single crochet in the next one. Now you need to create this next space for the next arrow stitch in the future. So to do that you're gonna chain up one, skip one and single crochet in the next. These chains that you're doing will be right up over top of each other so it keeps that arrow going straight up. We're now gonna treble back into the same one that you were just in. So wrap the hook and just come back and get into that same stitch again and stay into the front side of the project. Make sure that when you go in there you're getting the actual stitch itself. So wrap twice and then just two, two and two back up. So this treble here is considered the next stitch so don't go into that one and I want you to single crochet the next two in a row. So one and two. So noticing that it's two singles that kind of separate things at this moment. The next uh, two front post double crochets are gonna go around these front post double crochets back on round number two. So wrap in the hook, just come right into those from the side and make those a front post double crochet and do those two. Now when I lean it over the next two are considered these two so don't use any of those and you want to single crochet the next two in a row. See two is your favorite number. Now here's the middle of that knot work. We wanna create the crisscross. So we're gonna skip the first two of them and go into the third one with the front post treble. So wrap the hook twice and go into the third one and treble. Then I want you to go into the next one. So wrapping twice and then going into the next one after it. Now what we want to do is we want to collect the first one. So coming in front and now we're gonna collect the next one. So in the future I will refer to go into number three, go into number, so I will refer to go number three, number four, number one and number two. It's just easier. So when I lean it forward the next four stitches are considered this crisscross. So one, two, three, four and you're going to single crochet in the next two. And your next two are here the front post double crochets that are here. 
So make those front post double crochets. When they're going straight down of these double uh, front posts, they're always just a, a regular, they're not a treble. So now we're gonna head back to the next arrow stitch. So the next two in a row, so one, two, the next two in a row are just regular single crochets. And then you start doing your treble. So your treble is gonna go into to create this arrow stitch. So wrap twice going into that stitch. You skipped on round number two and make it into a treble. That is considered the next stitch. So single to the one after that chain one, skip one and single after that. Do a double check to make sure that this space lines up to the space that you just created and if you're satisfied keep on going and treble into that same stitch for the other side of the arrow stitch. Now that next one is considered this treble so you're going to single crochet in the next two. And then you're into a repeat pattern once again. So your next two are the front post doubles. So I'm gonna speed up a little bit. So you're just gotta keep repeating this pattern all the way around. So the next two is single crochets. Noticing that I'm verifying the stitch in behind. I'm not, that's not because I'm stupid or anything. It's because that's the only way to double check to make sure you're getting into the right ones. So here's your next group of four. We're now gonna crisscross. So we're gonna crisscross to the third for a front post treble. Now go to the fourth. Now go to number one. And now go to number three, or number two. So you can see that you just created that. One, two, three, four, go and single crochet the next two and you're back up on a front post double. So you're gonna repeat this all the way around and make these a front post doubles and when you get all the way back around your final stitch will be one single crochet by itself. And then join it to the top of the first single crochet that you started with. So once you do that you're just gonna turn your work and do an odd uh, row. So the odd rows are always like three, five, seven, nine, etc. are always single crochets. So chain up one and single crochet into each of the stitches going all the way around. Don't forget those chain one spaces for those arrow stitches and do round number five now. So I'm coming up all the way to the end of round number five and I'm just gonna slip stitch to the top and then we're gonna turn our project and now we're looking at the right side again. You can see more cabling is starting to happen. So let's go back to the diagram and let's see what we're up to next. So we just completed off round number five so I'm gonna circle it. So now round number six we're gonna start up. We're gonna create these arrow stitches. Notice they're always in the same spot. So those ones you don't really gotta think about. The only time you really gotta think about these is that when you get up to round number 10 and uh, 12 when there's more spaces in between this cabling. That's really the only time you really gotta think. So here we have round number six. We're gonna chain up and one and then do the arrow and this time what we're going to do is we're gonna straighten out. So we just did a twist and now we're going to straighten back out just like you did here. So it's kind of a repeat that we've already know how to do. So let's uh, begin now. We're gonna come straight down in. These ones are gonna be slightly hidden right here and I'll show you how to just to peel those back to make sure you catch them and then we're gonna continue along. Let's start and try you on round number six. Let's start round number six. You're gonna chain up one, one single crochet in the first one. I'm looking at the right side of the project so the cabling should appear and now we're gonna do our next arrow stitch. So they're right on top of each other. If you see this gapping space that really gives you indication of where to go. So you just go into the stitch right below that gapping space and make yourself another treble and then don't forget I'm gonna stop saying this but the next stitch is the treble. So the next one after that is the single crochet, chain one, skip one, single crochet in the next and verify that these are on top of each other and they are. You're gonna treble into the one that you were just in and then the next one is the treble. So the next two in a row are each a single crochet. So now these are gonna line up just perfectly. So these ones here are the outside of the cable work. We're gonna continue those to make those as a front post double crochet. It's not until we start doing the twisting of the main cabling itself where those are gonna move. The next two in a row are each going to be a single crochet. Notice how I'm turning and just counting and verifying. 
and now we're gonna straighten up these. So the first two in a row are kind of almost buried. So let's do the first one cause you can see it. So the first one is a front post double crochet and the next one is kind of buried in behind. So go in like a dentist <laughs> and go in and peel that stitch out and back or pe peel it forward sorry and just double crochet it. So you, now you just peeled it and now you do the next two in a row front post doubles and now you officially have what appears to be a twist in your project. Neat eh? So the next two in a row are single crochets. Now the outside of the cabling work here is gonna still continue to be a front post double crochet and then the next two are single crochets and we're gonna continue then into the actual um, arrow stitch again. So wrapping twice going into the one that you have skipped already and then single crochet in the next one. S chain one, skip one, single crochet in the next. Verify that the stitches are on top of each other and they are and treble into the same one. Okay and then single crochet in the next two and you're back to another grouping of cabling. So you're just gonna continue to do what you already know. So the front, uh, first two are front post doubles and then two singles and now we're gonna untwist these, this next one here. So go in front post double the first one. Number two is kind of buried so just reach in behind, just pull it forward and front post double that one and then front post double the next two that you can really see well and now you just have another twist to your project and then neat. So the next two in a row are singles and then you're coming up to near to the end so eventually you're gonna come all the way around to the end and the last section here will be two front posts, double crochets and then you have one single crochet left and you're going to do a join. So I'm not gonna bore you too much now with these uh, odd rows coming back but all you're just gonna do for round number seven, turn your work and a single crochet each of these going all the way around. Don't forget that chain one space and we'll meet you at the end of round number seven. I'm at the end of round number seven. I'm just going to join it turn your project and now let's get ready. You can really start seeing it now jump. So let's go to round number eight in the diagram. Let's get you going. So round number eight we're gonna go back in the right side so you're looking at the good side. So this line here is the same as round number four. See how you did the crisscross? We're gonna crisscross again. So you can see it comes around and crisscrosses, straightens up crisscrosses again and then eventually you just have to continue to repeat this in the future. So let's repeat what we already know from round number four. So it's chain up one single crochet in the first one and now we're gonna continue our arrow stitch. So at this time I think that you've got enough practice. I don't need to explain it too heavily at this moment. So single crochet in the next one, chain one single crochet, in, uh, skip one single crochet in the next, keep these lined up which they are and treble into the same one. If you uh, looked at the rising tides uh, crochet bag that's based on these, this particular stitch itself. So you're going to single crochet in the next two and this is the outside of the cabling that we're about to hit. So we're gonna continue to make that as a front post double to keep that going up straight and we're gonna single crochet in the next two. So we're gonna create the twist once again like we did in number four. So we're gonna front post treble to the third one, so number three you're gonna front post treble to the fourth. You're gonna go to the number one. And then number two. See? And now you've got that nice beautiful twist going on. So we're now gonna single crochet in the next two. And we're gonna continue the outsides continuing straight up. So just make the next two a front post double. And then single crochet in the next two. 
and now we're gonna do another arrow stitch. So trebling into the one you skipped, single crochet in the next, chain one, skip one, single crochet in the next. Make sure the gapping spaces stay on top of each other and they are. And treble back in to complete that arrow stitch. And then single crochet in the next two and now we're back onto a repeat pattern. So the next first, the next two are front post double. And then the next two are a single crochet. And now we're gonna cause the twist of the four again. So front post treble to the third, to the fourth, to the first, to the second. And there you go. You have a nice beautiful twist again and then you're gonna single crochet in the next two. And eventually you're gonna hit all the way back around so you'll run into this cabling again. These are the outside of the cable work. You're just gonna keep those as being front post and double crochets and then you're just gonna single crochet in the next one and then join it. So round number nine, turn your work and it's one single crochet in each of the stitches including the chain one spaces that you left for the next arrow stitches for the future. Please do that. I'll see you at the end of round number nine. So I'm coming up to the end of round number nine. Just joining it to the first single crochet that you started with and then we're gonna turn our work and start for row number ten. So we're now going to begin round number ten. So these ones on the outside that you've been trailing all the way up are now going to lean inward. Therefore there's gonna be three single crochets that separate whatever it is in behind uh, that is in front of it. So as we start you see how these are coming in? So there's three single crochets that separate these arrow stitches in between each other. So it was two, now it's three and you're going to come back with a front post treble and collect and these are now going to lean in. So what you wanna pay attention to is that you're going to skip over these two middle ones here and making room because you're adding two single crochets here in the middle when you're going to do this. So it's really not hard. Just kind of follow the path as you go up. The arrow stitches are gonna be exactly where you think they are. So let's begin round number 10. So let's chain up one and single crochet in the first one. The arrow stitches always stay where they are and you're going to treble and make a new set of arrow stitches, uh, arrow stitch here. Hopefully by now you've got that idea. Just checking, make sure the space is lined up. I did it when I was doing my uh, my prototype as well. It's a habit. So this time after we've done the treble, we have been single crocheting twice. I now need you to single crochet three times in a row. So we're just gonna go one, two and three and the third one puts you over top of this one here which is what we want because we want that to lean over. So we're gonna front post treble the next two in a row. Now what we want to do is that these ones that are over here that are kind of slightly under, see how there's two single crochets in a row? We're gonna bury those and we're now gonna front post treble those two. So just jump right over and front post treble these and these will pull it over just like that. See? Now I turn it around and count your four. So one, two, three, four. Those are considered these four you just did. So you're gonna single crochet in the next two. So one and two. And now you're going to repeat what you just learned but for the next set here. So these two here and then these two here are going to come together. So you're gonna front post treble the first one and the next one. Now you're gonna reach over to this one over here and grab the first one. Continuing to do front post treble and the next one. And so you're gonna lean it forward, count your four stitches that you're skipping, that you're in front of. So one, two, three, four. And you're going to single crochet three in a row. So one, two, and three. Just like that. So you see you've just had yourself kind of leaning over. So these are now starting to head inward. These are now heading outward. 
Now you're gonna treble and make another arrow stitch. So those are exactly where they are, should be so they don't move. And then we begin again another set. So the next three in a row will each be a single crochet. So one, two, and the third one is up over top of this first one. So I know it's in the right position. Front post treble, the first two here that you have. And then reach over and grab the ones that are kind of underneath in the main knot itself. And front post treble those. Okay, and then count your four. So one, two, three, four. Those are the ones that it's sitting in front of. So single crochet in the next two and then do the same thing again. And eventually you're gonna come back around. So these here and then these here are gonna come together. So front post treble each one of them. Okay, and then those are the four, one, two, three, four, and single crochet then this time in the final two. So one and two. So normally it's been just one single crochet after it, but because to keep it balanced, it's two. Join it to the first one and then turn your work and do round number 11. So chain up one and one single crochet in each of the stitches going all the way around. Don't forget the chain one spaces that you've been creating as well. So let's finish up round number 11 and then we're gonna hit number 12 and you're just gonna uh, slip stitch to the first one and turn and now look at it. Isn't that awesome? So let's continue then to round number 12. So in round number 12 what's gonna happen is that we are going to crisscross twice now. So where these two came together we're gonna crisscross those and these two to crisscross. Look that there's three that's still separated because we're still indentating in and it's just rounds number 10 and 12 that the indentation happens and then you're back to regular uh, twos on the outside. So let's continue and test your skills for round number 12. Start round number 12. We're gonna chain up one and we're gonna single crochet into the first one and then keep our arrow stitch. So let's do another arrow stitch. We already know how to do this at this point. If you're doing a big sample with me then you are an expert on arrow stitching by now. Okay, keep that and treble. So we're still in that mode where the cable work is still indentating in. So there's gonna be three single crochets in a row again. So one, two, and three. So these four now we're gonna create a crisscross. So we're gonna go in front post treble into the third, into the fourth, into the first and into the second. So leaning it forward to count one, two, three, four and single crochet the next two in a row. So one and two and now you're going to crisscross the other two, the uh, other two sets here. So front post into the third, it's a treble don't forget, into the fourth into the first and into the second. And when you look at it, see you've just crisscrossed. So now the next uh, three in a row are single. So one, two, three, four. So one, two, and three. And now you're ready again for the arrow stitch. So just continue to do your arrow stitch as you know it. And now after the arrow stitch there's three single crochets again in a row for this one. So this happens on round number 10 and 12 for the three. So now you're just gonna uh, 
and twist up the next two, uh, two sets here. So go into the third. This is a treble, don't forget front post treble. Go into the fourth. Go into the first. And going into the second. Okay, you're gonna single crochet the next two. And then twist up the next set. So into the third, the fourth, into the first, and into the second. And then that's your four, so one, two, three, four, and single crochet in the final two. So one and two, and slip stitch to the first one, and then for round number 13, turn your work, chain up one, and single crochet into each of the stitches, plus the chain one spaces all the way around, and let's continue to work on this. So I'll see you at the end of this round. I'm finishing up round number 13 and heading to number 14. So in the repeat pattern, 14 is the one and the very final at the very top of your bag. So let's turn our work and let's then move on to round number 14. So 14 is the end of the repeat pattern at the end of this bag. So you're gonna repeat rounds number four to, to 17 one more time after this and then from four to 14. So in 14 what we're going to do is we're gonna straighten these back out. So we're gonna untwist these ones that we just twisted and bring it back to normal and bring it so that it will match down here to be able to do this once again. So round number 14, it, we're now returning back to twos in between uh, the sets here and this is all gonna be good to go. So let's go for round number 14, see how you do. So round number 14, chain up one, single crochet in the first one and continue your arrow stitching going up. So after the arrow stitch this time around, it's only two in a row, so we're no longer doing threes. And we're going to straighten this, these back out. So we're, we're basically creating this line to happen once again. So the front post trebles that are here, we wanna straighten those out. So we're gonna make these front post trebles and pull those over. And then in order to get that gapping space that you had before, that you see down here between the knots, the next two in a row are single crochets. So one and two. So these two here and these two are now gonna be pulled together and so we're gonna make those as front post trebles. So the, just continue, so there's four in a row. So we're getting ourselves back to where we had started back down on round number four. So once you get those first two, go and jump over to the next one and make those and it will pull over. And then just turn it one, two, three, four and the next two in a row will each be a single crochet. So then these final one over here are gonna be front post trebles and those are gonna pull over out of the way. And then finally the last uh, single crochets are going in. So there's gonna be two single crochets and you're back to the arrow stitch. So let's see what we've just done. See? So let's make our arrow stitch again and I'll show you that one more time. So arrow gets to the point you really don't want to, you just gotta think about these cabling here and this stuff you don't need to think about much at all. Just do it helps that it doesn't move around, it just stays stationary. So two single crochets in a row after you get your arrow stitch and then we're now gonna untwist these. So we're gonna front post treble the first two and pull those over. And now the next two in a row are single crochets. So one and two, so we're separating that out. This one here and these ones over here, the ones that are underneath are gonna be front post treble crochets in a row. 
So they're gonna pull and group together as a, as a foursome. And then you have one, two, three, four, and single crochet the next two in a row. And then the very final one over here, they're gonna be front post trebles because we need to pull them out over the way, out of the way to untwist these cabling knots that you see. And then finally, you're gonna come to the end of this. You've already had one single crochet here, so there's only uh, one left. So it's the very final and you're just gonna turn, or sorry, join it with a slip stitch and turn. So you can see that everything has kinda gone out. So it's been twisting, it jumped over, and switch spaces and now we're coming up. So round number um, 15 now is just chain up one, one single crochet in each and the chain one spaces and see me at the end of round number 15. So I'm just finishing up the end of round number 15 and that's it. And just join it to the top, turn your work and now let's begin round number 16. So we've now come up near to the top. 17 is the end of the repeat. So we have 16 here. 16 looks just like what? Looks like row number six. It also looks like row number two, the setup row. So what we want to do then, the one set just pulled over, we wanna bring those together so it looks really good at this point and then we're gonna continue. Just keep in mind you got your twos and this is almost close to the end of the repeat. So let's get round number 16 done together. So 16, chain up one, one single crochet in the first and let's get your arrow stitches in there. Make those look real good. You'll notice that I'm double checking things as I go, just visually checking. So there's two single crochets in a row. Like, so we're back to the twos and now we're gonna go straight down. So this is going to be uh, front post double crochet. So now it's gonna stabilize it. So it's now starting to look like it'll match what you already did down over here. So two single crochets in a row are next. And so then the next ones here, the four are each a front post double crochet going straight down. See, no, not a lot of thought there. And so the four, one, two, three, four. The next two in a row are each a single crochet. And then the next two here are just straight down front post double crochet. See how it stabilizes everything. And so the next two in a row are single crochets and then we're back to the arrow stitch once again. So let's repeat what we already know. So the next two in a row are single crochets. And let's stabilize what we have here. So straight down, front post doubles. Two singles in a row. Straight down, front post doubles. And you're doing all four in a row so it pulls everything nicely together. Okay, one, two, three, four. The next two are single crochets and then straight down then to pick up those two. And then that's, and so you're gonna just continue to repeat that all the way around and then at the end of this round there's only one single crochet left and just join it. So round number 17 is exactly what you already know. So you're just gonna chain up one and one single crochet in each. And round number 17 is the very final of the repeat pattern. And you're gonna go and repeats number four all the way through 17 one more time. And then do it again all the way from four to 14. So you don't do all the way through 17 once again on the third time around. Just make sure that you just go to 14 and then the top of the bag picks up and then we'll bring it back to the bag and get yourselves established from that point. So continue then and I'll see you at the end of this round. So I'm just finishing up the end of round number 
17 and uh, it's all looking pretty good and that's it. So there is your full run through of one continuing repeat. So we have our setup. Let's back out the camera a little bit and let's bring back the other main project and let's show you what you're up to then. So as you can see I've been using Karen one pound and I've literally have done this now at this particular point. So this here is the repeat pattern that you see so from here to here. It just is much bigger because I used a bigger hook in Karen one pound. So you're going to repeat this pattern once again from four to seventeen and then you're going to repeat the pattern again from four to fourteen and the fourteen will then take you up here and then we're gonna do the band together. We're going to then uh, secure the base just like you see here and then we're gonna do the handles. So without further ado let's continue on. Make sure you get your repeats done and come back in this tutorial when you're ready to move on. So I'll see you then. So let's move on in the tutorial. So I just finished on round number 14 here. Notice that I did not do round number 15 to do the single crochet and noticing I'm not gonna flip it to the back side to the wrong side. Now I did fasten off. You didn't have to but I just did because I wanted to use this yarn for the other part of the tutorial. So we're just going to join the yarn if you if you have fastened off. If not just continue up and you're just gonna single crochet one into every stitch going all the way around and now that you can see the good side you can actually see the spaces of those chain ones that have been provided. Simply go into one to every stitch and if it's a chain one like it is now that's the middle of the arrow just go right into the space and fill it in. So one single crochet into each. When you get all the way back around I want you to join it with a um, slip stitch and then chain up one and begin again single crochet. I want four rounds of this and then you're going to fasten off and then that's it. So just four rounds of single crochet and then meet me back here in just a moment. So I'm gonna leave this within your hands and get that done and I'll see you back here in a moment. So I'm coming all the way to the end. I have my four rows of single crochet included. Now I wanna show you how to uh, join these then with the tapestry needle to hide in the loose ends and uh, you have a really nice border at the top. What I would recommend too is also saving the same colors of yarn that you did. Uh, here I already did that with this brown so I can use it for, to sew in the straps so you can go right through the project. Just join it to the beginning of the single crochet. Now just leave on an extra long yarn tail and you are gonna throw that through. So just pull it a loop through and now just put it into a darning needle or a tapestry needle. I have always called it a darning needle all my life. I don't know why. I think I'm old enough to remember darning socks. So just weave it through the back section only. That's the inside of the bag. Don't impede the outside edge look. So coming up through once. Twice. and three times. And if you go in and out three times you can really hide your work awesomely and you can just trim it right down. So what we're going to do then is flip this over. So we're just not inside out but we're just gonna flip it over and then do the bottom side of the bag. Now what I'd recommend is right where you have the starting strand that's where you're gonna have the edge. So just flip it over and what we're going to do then is that we're gonna start and do two rounds at the bottom in order to secure that in. So let's do that next. So grabbing your strand and you're going to join it to the bottom. Now I had you go in the back, uh, I had you go in the back loop of the chain all the way around. So I want you to just go and secure to the front one, uh, the, fr the first chain here and just join one. So include that as part of your single crochet and I want you to single crochet yourself all the way around and you're just going into the chain work. Now because you went into the chain work in the back hump this chain looks like it's perfect which it is and that makes it fairly really nice idea. So just continue now to single crochet yourself all the way around. Maybe back here in just a moment. So once you're all the way back around just join it to the first single crochet that you started with. Now the second round and final round for the base is that you're going to chain up one and one single crochet in the next two and then the next two are together. So pull through and pull through so that so you have them two loops together and pull through all three. So the next two are by themselves so single crochets and the next one are together. So pull through, pull through and pull through all three loops. Please do that all the way around for your final round of your base. 
So I'm coming all the way back around and I'm putting the final two together and that's it. So I'm just going to join it. Now when I go to fasten this off I wanna leave an extra long yarn tail here. I wanna use that to be able to secure the base of it. I'm going to pull this through and that'll be my uh, uh, my tapestry needle yarn and what I'm going to do then is just fold this in half and make sure everything looks good and then I am going to then secure this across the bottom in order to seal off the bottom. We'll do that next. So let's seal up the bottom of your bag and you're simply going to put this yarn strand onto a tapestry needle and I want you to whip stitch your way all the way across. Notice that you can see the good side of the project. So what I want you to do is just bring it up and then just match the stitches to each other. So just go in the bottom one here and then go to the top one and then just go right across. And then because it's caught and you can pull on it, give it, uh, take all the slack out of it and then you just move to the next stitch on the bottom and next stitch on top and all I want you to do is just go all the way across now and I will see you at the end of this crossing and we'll, we'll put things to, uh, put things to bed with just fastening in the loose ends. So I'm coming to the end of just whip stitching all the way across and my goal is is to make sure that I get every stitch so that I don't end up with a hole in the bottom of my bag. Just going right to the end. So this now establishes the flat side of your bag and then we're gonna move on to the handles next. So at the last one here I'm just looping it through and just kind of creating it so it does a little mini tie, nothing that you can really see. And then the goal is is to highlight the, the stitches to be hidden really well. So to do that what we're just going to do is that you're just gonna drag the yarn through. Just stay on the inside of the project. So go through once. Okay, come back through a different path twice. So that's number two. And then back through a different path for number three. And by going back and forth three times you can hide it in really, really well. So now that's it. So you, now you can safely cut this down into the project. So what we're going to do now is move on to the handles and the handles what they are is uh, my favorite handles. So I have a separate tutorial available for that. So now that we've done that here are the handles. We need to make two of them. So what I'm gonna do is uh, put you onto that video now that's part of this tutorial and it is making one of these or you need to make two of these and you can see that they're both different colors because they came out of the yarn ball differently and then what we're going to do after you get those done is that we are going to sew them about three and a half inches. That's the size of my hand here, right here and right here and you'll do both sides so that you have both handles. So let's go on to that tutorial first and then when we come back we'll start putting these together on. I'll show you how to demonstrate how to do it once and then you can do the rest and then we can be satisfied with our finishing of our bag. So we need to make two handles you see here. What they are is five rows, okay, five rows of single crochet and then the sixth row what we do is we sandwich it up and single crochet our way all the way across which creates a nice gripping handle which is not too obscene in your hands like it's not too big. So let's uh, begin to do that. So you have to only chain 100. You have to do two of these. I've got them already done but I'll show you how that's done and then we're gonna continue then to sew that to the project. So let's grab our four millimeter size G crochet hook in order to play. So let's get our slip knot ready and let's zoom in and let's get after it. So I want you to chain a total of 100. I'm not gonna do 100 because I've already got it done. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So you're gonna have all the way to 100. I want you to turn it over and get the back hump of the chain and single crochet yourself all the way across. You will have the most perfect edge if you do it all the, all the way like that. The only product that that does not ever work on is Bernat Blanket. When you turn it over to do that it creates a gapping space because the yarn is so thick. But that is my standard technique of turning it over and getting the back chain and actually I find with myself as a kid is that I can never get that chain to look right and when you go in the back hump just like that it literally creates the most perfect um, um, first row ever and because you never have a row that kind of looks out of place. So that was row number one out of five. Turn your work 
and now this is two. So chain up one and single crochet yourself all the way across and go right to the very end. So this is row number two. Obviously it will take you longer to get across. So you've got a hundred stitches. I only have like nine at this time. So how did I know I had nine without really having to count? Well when you crochet a chain and you go second chain from the hook. So if I crochet a 100 and I go second chain from the hook that means I'll have 99 when you have to eliminate one stitch out or one chain. So turn your work. Let's do row number three. Just continuing to go across. I kind of like this um, part of the project itself. You can sit in front of the TV not really have to worry about too much. Um, if you're a person that can watch TV and look away a lot um, the handles are really quite easy to be able to, to master. So we're gonna turn our work and go for row number four. It's almost like a tango isn't it? Do you remember Fred Flintstone doing the tango? I always remember the music from that. Okay, so this is uh, row number four that we're about to finish. Turn our work, go for row number five. So this is the final row. So just continuing to go. So what I want to do then after I get row number five done, we want to sandwich this in half and create a tube shape like that. I really don't like crocheting small little mini tubes, but I like doing it like this where I can just do my rows back and forth and then fold it. It's a lot easier. It's less headache too. So what I want you to do is sink your hook into the first stitch and then fold it up and get the matching stitch on the other side and pull it together. Get your, your straggler and pull it through and then single crochet. So advance one stitch on the one side and advance the next stitch on the other side and put it together. And you're just gonna single crochet yourself all the way down and you're seeing that you're creating a tube like shape by doing so. So please do that all the way down and you can leave an extra long yarn tail at the end of this one because you can use that then to sew it to the project which we'll be doing next. So eventually you get here you can leave an extra long yarn strand and then what we're gonna do is pull down the project again and we're gonna start then marking it out where we want it and then we're going to sew it to the bag itself. Okay so now that you have your handles done you should have two of them. So let's mark on this pattern where we want to put it. So I like my handles to be three and a half inches in. I know my hand distance it's about three and a half and so this is where I'm going to put it right here. So I'm just gonna put the first one in. My hands are equal in size as far as like the three and a half inches when I put down the other hand. So there you go and I'm gonna put down the other hand. And there you go. So you can measure if you wish if you feel like you need to do that. And then once you get the first side done all you're just going to do now is just peel it back. So just peel it back like this and see where it matches the other side. And then mark the other side. And you'll do that with both of the sides as well. So peel and now they're good to go. So now we want to put our handles. So what I want you to do is use the color that's the main color that you want to do here. You're gonna go right through this and if you use the same color it's pretty much invisible. So let's use that now and let's strategically put on a handle. I'll show you it one time and then you'll do the rest on your own. So with your strand of yarn just create a slip knot on the one side. Just do a little bit of a longer tail than normal. So you can use a tapestry needle to hide in that end. The other side I want you to put that tapestry needle in onto it. And let's begin. So it's easier to work from the inside of the bag going outward. So we are looking at the outside of the bag. So peel back the first layer and we want to concentrate on this one right here. So what we want to do is that we want to place it. This is gonna be the middle of the, of the handle. So just roughly put it over. And then when you go the other side you wanna make sure this is not twisted in any weird way and you're gonna put the other side. But we're only gonna concentrate on one side for now. So just pushing down on it and holding it together just come down through the outside of this here. Go right through the other side and stop as soon as you get to that slip knot just there. Come back through from the back side and put the loop through and pull. And that will lock it into position. So you can see it's per permanently in. So what I want you to do is go in and out, up and up, over, down, back across and then a few on the inside here and just give it a good tug when you make sure, uh, when you know that it's gonna be good. You want, might want to just for your reference to pull the stitch marker out now so that you know uh, where it is now but it doesn't get stuck in the strands when you're going in and out of your project. 
So please do this now and when I come back we'll just secure off and then you're gonna do the other uh, three by yourself. Once you believe that you've secured it in enough it's really good and stable all you're just going to do then is just drag it through some of the st uh, fibers on the inside of the bag and just wrap it around a loop and just make sure it kind of ties onto itself. Pull it really good and snug and then just go back in and out a total of three times in your work. See this side I'm really not worried about the color of how I attach it because it's the inside of the bag but I try to get it as close as possible and then what's happens on the other side because you've gone all the way through it's pretty much invisible because you've used the same color. So all you just need to do then is just trim off that yarn that we just hit in. Now remember that extra long tail that we had started with. We're going to then just grab that one and we're going to weave it in and out three times as well. It's already in a slip knot formation so it will not follow anyway but um, if you're using this bag nobody wants to see your tails. <laughs> so they say right. So that was just one time. I don't like to waste too much yarn so I'm kind of struggling here with the smaller piece. You know I love these Karen cotton cakes. Just love them. and then just go in and out three times and then once you're good to go just trim it and you're going to do the same with the other side. So I'm not gonna show you the rest of the three. So just follow it up and make sure it loops around and then comes back down the other side. So the inside here is the last where the uh, handle's joined and then what you're going to do once this side is done you're gonna flip the bag like this, peel this back and then do the other side just like you see. And that's it for now. So I'll see you at the end of this tutorial. So this is the end of the road folks. So we got our new cable bag and it's awesome. You got the bottom here sealed up. You got the handles ready to go and now I'm ready to enjoy. So until next time it's Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd. So it's my friends over at Yarnspirations. Please enjoy your new bag. We'll see you again real soon. Bye bye.